This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. To see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Let's begin the sample. Another tricky part about this is we may be using a domain name that's not accessible on the internet, like .local. So my internal Active Directory domain is ITDVDs.local. Well, as we've seen, if we go back and look at phxdc01 in our itdvds.com zone, our mail exchanger for itdvds.com is phxexchange.itdvds.local. Well, I can't create that same record on our external DNS server because it can't resolve phxexchange01.itdvds.local because .local is a domain that you can only use internally. So now let's take a look at our external DNS server. Okay, so I'm on my external DNS server, external DNS here. Let's go to tools. And a lot of times the external DNS server probably won't be a Windows server. It might be a Linux or a Unix DNS server running bind, but they function the same way. So they have records and they return whatever those records are. So I've got my itdvds.com zone. You can see I don't have an itdvds.local zone on my external DNS server that's because dot local is not accessible on the internet so what I've done here is I've created a host record for mail.itdvds.com now is mail the name of a server no it's actually just something we create it could be smtp.itdvds.com it could be uh, mailserver.itdvds.com something like that normally we, we kinda wanna make it up we don't wanna use the actual server name of our internal server like PHX Exchange 01. We don't want to use that out there on the internet. We kind of want to make something up. So mail.itdvs.com translates to 216.77.77.10. This is a publicly routable IP address that is configured on my firewall and normally we get that IP address from our ISP, our internet service provider. And on my firewall, it will translate that IP address to the server that's configured to receive mail. So if it's phxexchange01.itvs.local, it will be translated to 192.168.6.5, which is phxexchange01's IP. And that's how it's accessible from the Internet. Now, on our external DNS server, we also have our mail exchanger which is for mail.itdvds.com. So if the Gmail server is trying to send an email to itdvds.com, like joe at itdvds.com, it's going to look up the MX record for the itdvds.com domain, and it's going to query our external DNS server in order to do it. That's going to say, okay, you looking for itdvds.com for email? The mail server is mail.itdvds.com. Then it's going to query this DNS server for the A record, the host record for mail.itdvds.com. And here it is. And it's going to give me the IP address, 216.77.77.10. So now this mail server knows exactly where to send the email. Now for simplicity's sake here, I had mail going directly to our exchange server that had our mailbox server role and client access server role normally we would have an SMTP gateway or if we want to use exchange we would have a server with the edge transport role running and the mail.itdvs.com record that was on our external DNS server would resolve to an IP address that was translated on our firewall to the internal IP address of Edge01 here. The mail would then be sent to Edge01, and then Edge01 would have the internal IP address of PHX Exchange 01 configured as where to send the mail to once it gets it. So it gets it, takes a look at it. Ah, does it have any viruses? Is it spam? No, nope, looks good. So I know to send it to PHX Exchange 01. And there are a couple of different ways that Edge01 knows the IP address of PHX Exchange 01. Uh, we can create a subscription, as we'll see uh, in a later training, which will be the Exchange 2013 with Service Pack 1 training, intermediate to advanced, exactly how we configure our 
edge transport server. But if it was an SMTP gateway, a third-party one like Barracuda or something like that, uh, normally you can just configure it with the IP address, uh, PHX Exchange 01. You can hard code it, or you may have an, a DNS server in your DMZ that uh, this server would look at, and then that DNS server would be able to resolve PHX Exchange 01.itdbs.local. So to simply sum it up here, Servers that are out on the internet or desktops that are out on the internet are going to query our external DNS server. If we have computers on our internal network that need to find our exchange server, they're going to query our internal DNS server. Internal DNS server is going to resolve to internal IP addresses. External DNS server is going to use external IP addresses and external domain names.